the apostles, elders, and bishops of Great Millstone who rule well over the flock. Shalom and salutation to Akim out here. That's pushing the words of truth and sincerity. Shalom to all the elect Akim, Akwa, scattered Israelites, and Israelite foreigners. I brought this out. This video will be edifying. Repound mouth. And just going over some of what we discussed yesterday at sit down, um, the classroom setting. Um, as you can see, as we're told in the scriptures, 183rd installment last night. And um, and um, this is just a few of the scriptures that um, I didn't get to bring out in time. And, um, the, you know, being that we do shows that often, um, we just save them for another time. So um, during the show, we spoke about the two thirds, you know, the spirit had the two thirds come out a lot and just how they're blind. You know, it was very edifying. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Um, how the two thirds are basically they all have this syndrome called Anton syndrome, right? And um, we started off basically talking about faith as always, you know, amongst the believers. So, without further ado, First Thessalonians three and three, <clears throat> it says that no man be moved by these afflictions. And so, what we understand as prophets, as um, seers. Or as um, men who the Lord uses to wake up his his uh, his elect or his blind to give the blind sight um, as far as spiritual perception, as far as what times are ahead. Um, this job, all right, this duty, as it is in the scriptures, it's an occupation, it's a vocation, it's a calling. All right, this job entails um, a lot of going through afflictions, set afflictions of persecutions, trials and tribulations. So sometimes it shakes uh you up to the point where you could fall so brothers always are you know considerate amongst each other of our own afflictions that we're going through as well as the afflictions of others so here it is an example of that where i believe it's all right it says encouragement of timothy's visit and here paul is speaking about timotheus or timothy and how he's really looking forward to seeing timothy because once you're in this fold, once you're amongst the group, once you're amongst the congregation of the Lord, you really just have a um, inward desire to look out for each other in a, in a way, right? And even that, you have to tame it because in the world, you believe that looking out for each other looks like one thing or looks one way or another way. Well, you know, spiritual understanding helps you see that uh, looking out for each other might include rebuke and correction, instruction and um let's say moderation, let's say what they call today constructive criticism, all of these things. So uh, it's also teaching and encouraging brothers and exhorting brothers in the faith and um, uh, prophetically warning each other, all right, keeping each other sharp, iron sharpeneth iron. So these are all the things that go into what makes up the brotherhood or the faith or the church and the body of Yahweh Shah. So he's saying that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. What that means is, you, you know, in the NLT, uh, but you know that we are destined for such troubles, right? You're appointed. So you have an appointment with troubles. The word appoint, appointed is like appointment, like something set in the future for you to go to or go through. And the Lord said, we, you know, Paul says here, our sufferings is a part of those appointments. So not only do we look forward to the times in which we're going to be redeemed and uh, beamed up back, lifted up. And, and back into those chariots with Yahweh Shah at his coming. But we also looking forward to those appointment with troubles and tribulations and afflictions. And hopefully that we're not moved by these things. It says, and to be moved, by the way, steadfast um, encourages the idea that you have to be cemented down in your belief. Your foundation and the principles of these scriptures have to be so cemented in your mind. It's like seared now. And so it can't be movable. It's like, you know. When you really want something cemented down, you either use cement or you use drills to put anchors and, and you know, hooks into so that's something, you know, you might fasten it down with a belt, you know, different variations of having things hold it, you know, structured and, and rooted and grounded. And so we hope Paul, Paul is hoping that Timotheus has that much uh, rootedness. And steadfastness in this word so that when these said appointed times of affliction comes, you won't be shaken out of your mind. And that's what sound uh, wisdom is. It's something that doesn't allow you to be shaken out of your mind. You're whole, you're fit. You're ready to fight off whatever 
trials and tribulations happen. It says, for this cause, we, when I no longer forbear, I sent to know your faith. Um, Baba Gassel, let me go up. I'll skip four. For verily, when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation, even as it came to pass in ye know. So now we know. We all know amongst the fold, the body, Akin, we're going to suffer tribulation. It was known back then. It's known now. So you have to set your heart aright. Right. When you enter into the uh, what is it? When you enter into um, this this word or to serve the Lord, uh, prepare thy soul for temptation. So always, brothers, Akim, um, Akwath, even young and old, just prepare your soul for t the temptation and the sad afflictions that are to come. You know, whether it's Jacob's trouble, the serious events of Jacob's trouble in the times of trouble ahead that's uh, forecasted of great darkness and, and destruction. Or whether it's um, things as, you know, losing losing jobs or losing family members, you know, death in the family or somebody walking away from you that you a loved one or, uh, lose, you know, financial tribulations or, you know, personal conflicts within your own spirit. These things you got to go through and it's known. All right. This is the book of Luke 21. And let me see here. Mm -hmm. We went through a few things, All right? So this is Luke twenty uh, one and five, and we spoke a little bit about uh, Yahweh Shai in those times um, uh, that are being revealed right now. That let us know that we're in this these end times, and Yahweh Shai is drawing there. As you can see, the title "Return of Yahweh Shai." This is one of those future prophecies that are heavily covered in the scriptures, and we always go into. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon. And then I brought this scripture out or I had this on deck because um, there's a cold moon coming this New Year's. You'd have to look it up, do more research on it. But within the past three years or so, it's probably the most astrological events I've ever seen in the last 15. So you got your super moons, you got your super blue moons. All right. You got your red moons and so forth and so on. So these signs in the heavens are just uh, a, a tests or um, testifying of Yahweh Shah's return. It says, and in the stars. So signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon earth, the stress of nations. All right. It says, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. So this distress is being brought on by um, um, pandemic situations. It's being brought on by uh, manipulated currency uh, uh, devaluing. All right. Or inflated currencies. All right. It's being brought on by wars and rumors of wars. All right. It's being brought on by, you know, um, price uh, uh, risings. So a lot of things is bringing stress, you know, distress to nations at this point in time. So you got the stars and you got the signs from above and then you got the signs on earth and all leading up to the coming of the Messiah, Yahusha, to return and redeem his elect. All right. So let's see what I had here. This is, um, okay. Converted. Mm -hmm. This is an account with a prison guard who uh, also believed, if I'm not mistaken. All right. So this is um in the book of Acts um, um, 29, because again, you know, these are some of the, um, um, topics that we went into last night in the sit down and one of them that came up was um that you got to actually believe you know a, a, above all the video watching and you know uh, what remains is whatever you believe you know you can listen to you can go camp jump if you want to or, you know and get more confused or you can listen to let's say gms all day but if you don't believe you know our job is not to make you believe our job is to teach you the things that men had that believed on were saved by believing on these things believing on the names yahweh and yahweh Shah. so faith is serious now during this time um paul and silas as you see were in prison okay and the lord uh delivered them verse 25 and at midnight paul and silas prayed and sang praises unto yahweh and the prison heard them and, and the prisoners heard them and so you know you're giving praise to the lord you know, for 
ahead of time. That's crazy, right? That idea is crazy. They're in prison giving praise, singing praises and praying. And some might say that's crazy. You know, you are, it's too late to do that. But here it is in, in, in your highest, while, while everything is light, you pray. And then while everything's dark, you pray. In the moments of um, happiness, you pray. In the moments of when the Lord brings you really low, you pray. All right. Regardless of what situation you're in, you have to have prayer and, and praise to the names of Yahweh Hashem Yahshua continually. Especially in situations like this. Don't let uh, your hope leave you because you're in straits now, in perils now. It says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake, and so the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had fled. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. So they didn't run. It says, Then he called for a light and sprang in, and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas. So it's dark as hell in there and all the doors is open. He thought they all escaped, but they didn't. All right. And he, now he's fall, he fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Just instantly in that moment with all of these things happening, he was about to, he was suicidal and the Lord he basically sent Paul and Silas to stop him from, from committing that act. And his response isn't, man, thank you, man, or I'm so hurt, or in pain. his response is, how do I be saved, right? Because something that powerful, um, of a magnitude that powerful, and yet and still, yo, 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 you know, somebody's still reaching out to to tell you uh, not to end your life, right? And the, the combined of all of these things happening is what helped. This prison guard realized that this power is way above whatever I can cons I consider the power. This truth is far above what I consider truth. And when you finally get to that um, appointed time in which the Lord allows you to see, see, this man finally saw. Right. He wanted to be saved. He saw that this power can save you. He saved all these prisoners. He basically gave them free reign to walk out through an earthquake. Well, he recognized in that moment that the power of the earth is their, their, their God, who they're praying to all night. It says, and they said, believe on the Lord, Yahweh, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes and was baptized and he and all his his straight way. So they believed, man, the power of faith, the power of belief is everything to you. How faith is a synonymous with loyalty. You show your loyalty by believing in these words. And that's just not by face value. You know, this is not something that you got to make everyone else think you believe. You have to believe, all right? The Lord charges and tries the inward man and the inward parts. And ultimately, how about how about this? Since the scriptures are here and, you you know, when rightly dividing the scriptures, it's used as a two-edged sword, cutting the sun into the intents of the heart, the discernment of man. The scriptures are going to reveal whether you believe because the more scriptures come out, you're either going to say, no, nah, I don't like that one. That don't mess with me. Or you're going to say, wow, you know what? I stand corrected. You're going to have that... Uh, Cognitive dissonance where your whole worldview is pushed away because you have to change. The tr truth changes you and it changes you daily. The more you learn, the more you actually change. And you start it starts with your mind, right? And it and we spoke about that yesterday. The sit down start with your mind, and then it flourishes all throughout, you know, in your actions, all right, in your mannerisms, how you speak. You start to use wisdom. All right. You start to um apply wisdom. OK, so it starts with faith. Psalms 37 and 39 says, but the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. So we just recognize that in times of trouble. That's where our strength is. And that was important analogies back then to talk about strength and power and refuge and safety because they lived in a place where bandits can come and hooligans was 
on the on alert and vagabonds and people just come into your city and steal and take and theft was real there was no cameras back then there was no you can easily call police women was being ravaged and taken in, in outside of the gates where there was no safety at you know when when nations did conquer nations you would have to go find safety and refuge in strong towers and things like that so everybody understood this concept of uh, uh lack of safety and how quickly so a good situation can turn bad. Well, and they didn't have this normalcy bias as Americans do. Man, we've never been hit. We going whoever wants to go to war with us, we are gonna break them down. We gonna they gonna fall out of knees. They gonna beg. They wish and wish they never went to war with America. It wasn't like that. This place alludes to a false sense of uh, safety. But in the ancient world, man, safety was of the Lord and only of the Lord. But the salvation of the righteous is of the law. So when that time comes and trouble arises and it's all hell breaks loose, these are the times that we pray for. These are the pointed times I knew we knew where we're coming. We got the heads up, like they say in that movie, uh, Leave the World Behind. Sometimes just the, uh, the fact that you got a heads up is good enough for them. They don't got to drag your hand and hold you by the hand and save you and deliver you like it's some, some action movie. They just tell you what's going to happen and then this, the rest is up for you. Now, now that we know what's going to happen, the WEF, the WHO, the, all of these, Bill, BG and all of these other members of the elite groups have basically, you know, brought out information and dropped gems and hidden gems and Easter eggs and movies to let us know about the times, the heavy times to come. We already got our one about them. Now your chance to turn to Yahweh Hashem Yahshua is here and he's going to be your salvation. Meaning he's going to deliver you out of all of these sad perils and um, that's about to happen on earth and conflicts. It says, and the Lord shall help them and deliver them. So we want that help. Everyone wants to be that person in the action movie that gets saved and delivered by the hero. Thank you, Superman, or thank you, Batman, or whoever. You want somebody to come out the world works and save you. Well, that's what's going to be Yahweh Shah. He's the Avenger. All right. He's not only going to deliver his elect, but he's going to establish them and set them on the hill. He's going to set them on the top of the government of this in the government seats of the uh, of the uh, um, the kingdom of Israel. Man, So we got a lot to look forward to dealing with you. I and believing on him. It says he shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. So don't lose that faith. This is Psalms 91 verse eight. It says only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked we're looking forward to reward happening how you gonna see it with your eyes right what is the wicked and the punishments to come for the for the wicked destruction all right um unalivened in masses okay the script says many great miseries shall be done unto them in the latter days because they have walked with great pride it says because thou has made the lord which is my refuge even the most high thy habitation Again, a refuge, a place of safety in times of trouble. That's Yahweh Shah. That's why we say turn back to him now while it's peace time, because very soon it's going to be evil. The scripture says, um, seek him now before the evil days draw nigh. There shall no evil befall thee. Who's thee? The ones that believe. It says, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Come near you where you live. Come near your, your, your home, it says in the NLT. Why? Because the Most High will ward off all plagues, all calamities, all pestilences, all evil away from you. Meaning, meaning every even though as it blankets the whole country, even as it blankets the whole world at some point in time, in the near future, at an appointed time, it's... It's going to cover you. It's going to pass over you. That's where the story of the Passover comes from. It came from the fact that the Lord, we had a heads up on what the, how the death would uh, strike um, during this plague, this specific plague in the, in the land of Egypt, being captives there. And the believers in Israel was cautioned that if unless they put blood on their doorpost, the, the plague of death or, you know, the, the angel of death would come in. To kill their firstborn in their sleep during th throughout the night. That's why you heard cries throughout the night. Many people were waking up to their firstborns dead, their first cat born cattles, so forth and so on. And except the, the Israelites who should put that blood on their doorpost. So it's very this blood on your doorpost figuratively now would be having that um drinking that blood of Yahweh Shah. He said, you know, you have to eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, which basically is a, a reference to um, 
um, you're satisfied with the scriptures. You believe wholeheartedly that he is able to save, just like he asked that man uh, who is the who is the um, the uh, in the previous verses. He asked the um, guard, the prison guard, you know, prison guard asked, how can I be saved? He said, you have to believe. So that's it. Our belief, our faith is going to take us where we need to go. This is Psalms 125 and 1. They that trust in the Lord shall be as a mount, as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abide forever. This is Ezekiel 2 and verse 8. But thou son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat what I that I give thee. So that consuming of Yahweh's flesh is similar to consuming of an actual this this or consuming of a roll, because he goes on, and when I looked, behold, and hand was sent unto me, and lo, a roll of a book was there, in, and he was told to eat that roll in the next chapter. Right? In the next chapter it says, Eat the roll. And so just like Yahweh Shah said, eat of my flesh and my drink of my blood. It's not actually talking about eat being a cannibal. Just like it's not talking about eating papers. It's talking about believing and eating up and believing on what the words are telling you are about to happen. Believing on his prophecies um, by way of his prophets. Believing on his um, his word all right, and his abilities to be able to heal and, and um, uh, save it says, and he spread it before me. This is that book. And it was written. This is the scriptures within and without on each side. And there was written limit therein, lamentations, mourning and woe. There you go. Lamentations, mourning and woe. And so you have destruction as you see here, funeral songs and words of sorrow and pronouncements of doom. You see here. So all of this destructive, violent uh, uh, conversation and messages and videos and precepts that brothers bring out. That's because we eat in the role. You see now you see how this Christian church ain't giving you the role. They giving you the, the cornbread. That's not the role. They giving you the uh, uh, the silly, you know, the cliff notes. That ain't the role. The role to be eaten is filled with lamentations, mourning and woe, destructive uh, uh, songs, uh, you know, that, you know, unaliving events and future prophecies, things to warn you of the calamities to come, perils and pestilences, plagues, signs of signs that was given that that would be given in these end times revealing that the Lord is near. So when you eat that roll, you become changed because now you're not thinking, um, you know, have a happy, holly jolly Christmas. You don't care about none of that, man. You, you you don't care not because you a miserable uh uh you know nincompoop you 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 don't care because the lord gave you this role and you consumed it and now you have this faith that even in the destruction to come he's going to deliver you you have more hope and so you don't have and then now you see the world for what it is they're pretending that everything's going to be all right when it's not how do you get ready for something do you get ready for a catastrophic event by playing around in the sand and jumping around doing jumping jacks? Or do you get ready by um, tuning in to the Savior, getting closer to the Savior in his true words? That's why he said his true worship is returned back to him in these last days. There's a worshiper, but then there's a true worshiper. This is John 12 and 48 it says, He that rejected me and receiving not my words have, no, have one that judge of him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. So there's a great judgment to come for all these people that are not going to hear it. The Lord said, you know, the Heavenly Father going to judge you. I'm just going to be sent to apply that judgment on you. Right. This is Proverbs let me see, 29 verse 18. Let me just highlight that. It says where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law Happy is he. We went over that Anton disease. Check that out. That's about people who um, have been deceived that they can still see even though they are blind. Well, as you can see in the NLT, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. Um, there is no vision of these people, meaning they can't see what's to come, but they can, but they don't consider that um, they can't see. Um, so they're going to um, be unalived in the events and the catastrophe. Um, catastrophes and perils to come all right you must be able to see and how do you see you have to see the visions that the lord has appointed for uh these future 
events. You have to see um, what's coming, what's to come. So instead of just watching a movie, you can see now all the destructive uh, uh, future plans of the elites in that they leave as messages in their movies to warn each other. And they're just really told it in their, you know, in their face because they have a something called the revealing the revelation of the method, which basically means that the elites like to show before they actually do something to you people, man. And it's sick, but that's what's really going on in this world. So where there's no vision, the people perish now. We can't make that up, man. If you don't see this truth, if you don't see the scriptures, if you're not vividly seeing and depicting what the Lord has in store for his people, even now in the salvation in the kingdom of heaven, if you can't see, if you can't internalize it, if you can't conceptualize it, that means take a a word and make it a picture, an image in your mind, then it's just you're probably not you're probably of the two third. You're probably of those that are gonna perish. Second Chronicles fifteen and three. Now for a long season Israel have been without the true power and without a teacher and teaching priest and without a law. So this is why there is no vision for this people because for a long period of time uh, the Lord took away the stay in our staff. He took away all the things that made us uh, different as a nation. We had a direct connection to the Heavenly Father through his prophets. And he would give them visions through his teachers in this in this law. And so the Lord just took all of that away from us. All right. 70 AD. All right. All the way into uh, um, the completion of it was basically in this lifetime. Um, uh, in, the, in this 1970s, after you know, post slavery, and all the way up to the 1970s, where this word started being teach on the streets again for the first time in 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 our lifetimes, all right, in our grandparents' lifetimes, and so we started to um, be called back into the Lord by His men, all right, and so that that was the long season. You see, everything's done in seasons. Everything's seasonal. All right, just like there's a season for uh, peace, there's a season for war, and we're approaching that season. So we're getting ready for that season mentally, spiritually. It says, but when they, in their trouble, did turn unto the Lord, power of Israel, and saw him, he was found of them. And so that's some, one thing you always have to regard. The Lord, power, will be found of those that return and seek him. Even though we've been with it for a long time, without it for a long time, once you seek him back, you'll be found of it because the Lord... Uh, will quench that thirst and will quench that uh, desire uh, and need to to want to know what the hell is going on in the world. He'll quench that with this word if you turn back to him and if your fruit meet for repentance. Colossians 1 and 9, for this cause we also, since the day we heard it, did not cease to pray for you and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. So that's what this word do. It fills you and... um. That's a desire internally because you are a people who um, the Most High basically gave a void, a special void, a special emptiness that needs to on can only be filled with this word. And if you could fill it with whatever you want to fill it with, but if you ain't filled with this word, you are not going to be satisfied. You're going to be looking for something else to fill you and something else. That's why people hop to different religions and the scripture that Israel has uh, found this uh, play the harlot. You know, found itself under every green tree or, you know, some along them lines. Why? Because Israel will go from God to God, go from idol to idol, go from philosophy to philosophy, searching for one, searching for that one, right? That unknown God, as Paul was speaking about in the book of Acts 17, right? The one true power of the earth in his, his son. And unless you're coming back to that true light, all your other lights is going to grow dim. So the word filled. All right, is G4137 Pleru, all right, in the Greek. All right, he's not going to play Pleru. And it says to make full, to fill up. And this is what that word does to you. It says to cause to abound. So that means going over, overfill. My cup runneth over. To furnish or supply liberally, meaning, oh man, a lot. If I give you, if I give in, if you got a cup and I give you just a little bit, I, I think I just gave you a little bit, but if I like fill your cup all the top, I was pouring it out liberally. All right. I am liberally supplied right here. All right. And um, let me just make sure it's Colossians 1 and 9. So let's see down here. Jump to scripture index, hit up Colossians 1 and 9. And it's going to tell us exactly as you can see there. It's going to tell us what. Um, where this is used. So it's used to, uh, um, one to make full, to fill up, 
to cause to abound, furnish. It says, I, ab I abound, I am liter liberally supplied. Namely, with that is necessary for a subsistent, subsistence, subsistence, <laughs> Hebraicalistic, Hebraistically, with the accusative of the thing which is which one abounds of spiritual possessions of spiritual possessions and that's what we have here we have the spiritual possession of this word and it's were filled or supplied liberally with the spiritual possessions as you can see here it also gives Philippians 1 and 1, I'll quickly read, being filled, that was another one, with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Yahweh Shah unto the glory and praise of Yahweh. That's why the scriptures always allude to being your cup running over. The idea of, you know, you have an emptiness that's being, that's filled now. That's filled now. Exodus 31 and 3, I have filled him with the spirit of Yahweh in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in the manner of workmanship. Filled. Exodus 35 and 31, and he hath filled him with the spirit of Yahweh in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in the manner, all manner of workmanship. It says here, look at this, equivalent to flood. Equivalent to flood, man. So the Lord, really, the cup runneth over, man. You know, he really filled us for real. With that, with the song called Fill Us With The Light Of Day. <laughs> I know Barack Obama is laughing somewhere. Um, yep, so we failed, man. Let me read it again. But this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Paul, you know, he's writing to the Church of Colossia. About these, you know, comforting words to him. All right. Paul, an apostle of, uh, of Yahweh, Shah, by the will of, of Yahweh and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren at the, in Yahweh, Shah, which are at Collis. Collis. City of Collis. All right. So he's writing to his brothers in, in Akim out there and Akwath and the believers out there at Collis. As we're making these videos to, to, to you, Akim. Paul was doing the same thing. And we're praying as Paul prayed that you be filled with the spirit. That you desire. Right. He's desiring that you might be filled with the spirit of knowledge, not the spirit of happiness, but the spirit of knowledge, not the spirit of. Um, you know, Merry Christmas, but the spirit of knowledge of his will, whose will the Heavenly Father's will in all wisdom. In spiritual understanding, scripture tell you in James, whatever things you ask, if you lack in wisdom, ask it of the ask it of the Father without wavering. You gotta ask, you gotta pray, you gotta be filled with these things. Don't be just half filled. Filled. The Lord is filling liberally. He pouring that cup, man. So go get a full glass. Why do yourself a disservice that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of Yahweh, strengthened with all might. According to his glorious power and unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, giving thanks unto the father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. It's crazy. It's beautiful, man. As NLT says, and always thanking the father, he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. That's beautiful. I'm going to highlight these last two. So I'm going to end it there. Say call law, you may have a shot. I brought this out of the video. Was that a fine? Till next time, shalom.